Mutations are a very important concept in biology. They're the process by which new genes can be created, creating new opportunities for evolution to occur. Now, how do mutations occur? There's two major ways that you can have a mutation occur. One is during the normal DNA replication process of the cell cycle, right before cell division. Mistakes can happen. Now, you've got six billion nucleotides that your cell has to copy, in a human cell that is. But your cell is really good at catching any errors. And in fact, you only have, out of every billion nucleotides, you only get one error sneaking in. But that does mean that out of your six billion, you're gonna get somewhere around six-ish or so mistakes every time you copy your cell's DNA. And if you think about it, you've been copying your cell's DNA since you're a wee little cell inside your mommy's uh, uterus. So you're much bigger now. You've copied your DNA a whole bunch more times. And that's one of the reasons why, as people age, the chances of getting certain cancers, etc., increases because there's just accumulated genetic damage. Another common source is things called mutagens, which are chemicals or other environmental factors that can cause mistakes or either during DNA replication or damage to the DNA that later on when it gets repaired, mistakes are made by the repairing enzymes. For example, ultraviolet radiation can cause a damage because uh, it causes two neighboring thymines in the DNA uh, sequence to get joined to each other instead of joining with the adenines across from them. And then when the repair enzymes cut out those uh, two joined together thymines, the thymine dimer, they can randomly make some mistakes. Oh. Good reason not to go suntanning. So there's two major categories of uh, mutations. Point mutations, which is talking about when you're changing maybe a single base, versus chromosomal mutations, that's where you're changing large portions of the DNA. Within the point mutations, you can have base substitutions, which fall into several categories. There are silent base substitutions, missense, and nonsense base substitutions. That's a little bit different from insertions or deletions, where they pretty much have one big effect. Chromosomal mutations, when you're changing large portions of the DNA, you can have huge effects on the overall genetic function of that cell. Now there's deletions and insertions, there's duplications, inversions where you're swapping things around, translocation where you're taking DNA from one chromosome, putting on another, and then something that's very different called non-disjunction, which I'll get into a, a more in depth in just a moment. But let's first start off with the point mutations. Now, uh, one kind of substitution is something called a silent mutation. And this is one reason why a lot of mutations seem relatively benign. They don't have any real bad effects because of something called redundancy within the genetic code. Here's a sequence of codons, CAA, GUC, CGA, AAU. And I've used brackets to indicate the beginning and end of, e of each uh, codon which was set up for the ribosome by the start codon. And in green, I've put the three-letter abbreviation for the various amino acid names. Uh, otherwise, I just have too much to write because some of these names can be pretty long, like phenylalanine and threonine and such. So that's what these three-letter abbreviations are. Now, in this particular instance, I'm going to change the A in this codon to a G. Now, CGA, 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 I can see, translates to ARG, the pirate amino acid. CGG, if I look, hey, CGA, CGG, they're both the same ARG or arginine amino acid. So that's why this is called silent, because it doesn't have any real effect on how the protein looks. So you can have two sequences of RNA or DNA being different, but they still have no real difference in their phenotype. That's different from a missense mutation, where again, I'm gonna change my CGA codon, but this time I'm changing not the last letter, but I'm changing that first one. And now, if I take a look, instead of being up here, I'm down there. I'm changing it to GLI, which can have some significant effects on the overall protein, if it's in a part of the active side or an important folding location of the protein. For example, the disease known as sickle cell anemia is caused by a single missense mutation. A nonsense mutation is typically something that's bad. It's not good for the cell. In that, What happens is you randomly create a new stop codon. So our CGA, if we change that first C to a U, UGA is one of the stop codons that tells the ribosome, stop making the protein. And so it'll come along doo -doo -doo, and just stop. So Sometimes this is often called a, churn, I'm sorry, a chain terminating uh, 
mutation because it terminates the chain of amino acids early. Now, a insertion or deletion, you won't have silent insertion or deletions because you're going to change things. And if you notice, by adding in a G in front of that C, now I've shifted which three amino acids, or sorry, which three nucleotides I'm reading. So my reading frame has been changed. That's why this is called a reading frame shift or simply a frame shift mutation. And it causes every amino acid after the insertion or after the deletion to be screwed up. Unless, of course, you delete or insert three uh, pairs and then you'll have one additional amino acid. But still, you can have really big effects from this kind of mutation. Now, chromosomal mutations, as I said, are talking about changing the entire chromosome. Here's an example of a deletion or insertion. Here's a chromosome with my genes A, B, C, D, and so on. If I delete gene D, then the chromosome has been altered, and then the cell loses the effect of whatever that D gene was. Now, that's different than, say, a duplication. Here, during copying, sometimes mistakes can happen, and I can wind up with two additional copies of B and C. So now, the cell will wind up having, depending on, perhaps more of those proteins called for by those genes, or it may influence other factors uh, during, say, meiosis, because of the uh, pairing up during prophase and prometaphase, etc. It can have lots of effects. Inversion, here I have my three genes, and now I've not lost any DNA, but instead I've flipped it around. So again, this can cause some problems during the pairing up that happens during the first step of meiosis, but it can also have some effects if, say, there's a regulatory uh, sequence of DNA right here. Now it's supposed to be controlling B, but now it's controlling D. So weird things can happen in the cell. Translocation, I hate some of the names that scientists come up with. Rather than just saying, hey, it moved, they say translocation. See, a and B have been swapped over from the long chromosome to the short chromosome, and MNO has been swapped over to the big one. Now, I have mentioned previously that non-disjunction. This is something that is not ha caused by a mistake during DNA replication or whatever. This can be caused during that uh, process of making uh, gametes, either sperm or eggs, called meiosis. And here we see, rather than having the appropriate sequence of events happening during meiosis 1 and meiosis 2, we wind up having some of our chromosomes not being separated, whether during the pairing process or during meiosis 2 when the chromatids get separated. And you wind up with gametes. These two are normal, but this one has an extra chromosome. This one here is missing a chromosome. Uh, and to give you an idea of what kind of effects it can have, Having an additional chromosome number 21, called trisomy 21, is the disease known as Down syndrome. So as you can see, gene mutations can happen in many different ways. Sometimes their effects are benign, they have no effect. Sometimes their effects can be bad, and sometimes occasionally they're good, like if you gain superpowers.